For this review, we have the wind in our sails. The model is a Mammut Mercedes-Benz Actros with Notabome Super Wing Carrier. As you can see, the model comes in a typical red and black branded box. And on the back, we see that it's made by IMC Models. And the only model number is the Mammut model number 410270. Onto the weighing scales, and it's four pounds, five ounces, and that's 1.95 kilograms. But wait, there's more. If you're going to have a carrier, you might as well have what's being carried. And in this second box, we have a wind turbine blade, or as it's called here, a wing. This model number is 410271, and the box is a massive 49 inches or 125 centimeters long. It only weighs in at just about three pounds, and that's about 1.35 kilograms. Okay, it's out of the carrier first, and the box slides out of its sleeve. Don't forget to enjoy the little things as you lift up the lid, and it's got a satisfying smooth action. We now have our first sight of the model and our plastic formers in the top of the box, and the model parts are wrapped in soft paper. So with the wind in our sails, we proceed to get the model parts out. And there are quite a few, but there are no instructions with the model. But as usual, there is a Mammut collector card, and that shows that 750 pieces have been made. Now we get to go long with the Mammut wing, and we see that the wing is held in foam rubber, and it's wrapped in soft paper. So here we see the wing taken out of its packaging, and it's a very nice resin piece with an adapter plate at the end. Also included are a couple of transport cradles, and there's a further plate which is used to carry the wing on the carrier. The wing itself is not particularly heavy, it comes in at just about 15 ounces, and that is 420 grams. The Mercedes-Benz Actros comes with a couple of parts, one is a replacement fifth wheel for use with different trailers, and you also get a driver. So if you want to make it look like your truck is driving along the road, you can open the cab door and drop the operator in. And he seems very keen to get in. The gooseneck part of the trailer has a couple of drop down landing legs, and these have to be installed. Pins are also supplied in case you want to show the landing legs extended. After that, clunk click does the trick as we fit the trailer to the tractor. And then we've got a couple of parts to mount on the trailer. And the first is the rear carrying bracket for the wing. And it just drops down onto two sliding beams. Also included is an optional carrying cradle for the front of the trailer. And the method is the same, it drops into a couple of preformed holes. And all that gives us the model in its unloaded configuration. As previously stated, there are no instructions included, and there are a couple of parts which don't seem to have a clear purpose, and one is this long pin, and the only place it seems to fit is in a hole at the front of the spine beam. There are also some thin plates included, but again, there's no instructions as to where they might go. Let's check out the weight of the carrier model, and it's about two pounds, six ounces or about 1.1 kilograms. The wing is a standalone model with its own transport cradles, and we can assemble the wing on them. One just hooks over, and the other clamps the wing at its thin end. But as you can see, this is a very long model, at about 46 inches or 116 centimeters. Starting underneath the Actros, and there's a nicely detailed chassis, and that starts with the steering. And the high quality details extend to the back and the, to the two rear axles. There are good looking tyres on the wheels. One very nice aspect is the unique number plate, although the serial number on this one didn't match the number on the Mammut card. The front of the Actros looks great with a nice light bar on top, and the detailing around the front grille is really good too with the logo and graphics. There's a unique number plate at the bottom, and the chevron decoration stands out. There's also a towing hitch. On the side of the cab, the Mammut decoration looks sharp. Small graphics add detail, although surprisingly there doesn't seem to be a Mammut fleet number. And particularly good looking are the detailed wheels. At the back there's a series of cabinets in front of the equipment tower. And that also includes some coiled lines. 
The modelling of the trailer is to a very high standard, and it has a very high metal content. There are hydraulic landing legs, and also a spare wheel, and the underside of the deck timbers can be seen. The axle units are made of metal parts, and there are nice tyres. The detailing at the front of the gooseneck is very intricate, and it includes tiny graphics. There are graphics along the edge of the gooseneck, and that also does include a Mammut fleet number. Detailing behind the gooseneck is also very intricate and convincing, with good use made of paint highlighting. The edge stripe continues further down the trailer with a Mammut name, and at the back there are highlighted bolt locations, and metal rails run along the rear section of the deck. Sliding beams are in metal, and at the back there's more intricate detailing, and that includes both Mammut and Notabom logos. The rear carrying frame for the wing is a nice fabrication. The lower part is metal and the top is plastic, but the colour match is excellent. The two hangers attached to the fixing plate are plastic parts, but again the colour match is excellent, and that also applies to the clamp on one of the support cradles. On the Actros, the wheels on each rear axle spin together, and there's link steering on the front two axles with reasonable movement. Out on the road, the Actros rolls well enough, but there's a hint of skidding on the rear axles when the tractor is turning. With the steering set, the model poses well, and achieves a moderate angle. As we've already seen, both cab doors on the Actros can be opened, and that gives you different posing possibilities. On the trailer, the three rear axles also are linked for steering purposes, and you can set them to quite a hard lock, so realistic poses should be possible. The axle units have a large range of vertical movement, and that allows the trailer to raise itself up over obstacles if necessary. To pose it travelling high, you need to place a pin in the cylinders of the middle axles, and it's best to use a tool to put the pins in. Once they are in, they effectively lock the axle extension. Another feature of this trailer is that the rear section has its own landing legs, and these are hydraulically operated. They work well, and they allow the rear section to stay horizontal if it's parked with a wing on board. We've seen the height adjustment at the rear, there's also height adjustment at the gooseneck, and that's a nice piece of model engineering. Of course, this vehicle is all about going long, and the model extends very smoothly. And when we say going long, we mean it, as it's about 4 feet or 1.2 metres. You can also lock the extension of beams at intermediate points by using a pin. They work fine, but they do come out easily. And let's take a look at the model partially extended. And here you can see that it manoeuvres well, and even in an unloaded state, it is very impressive. But of course all carriers need a load to carry, and to put the wing on board we firstly need to make some adjustments. The two hangers at the base have to be unscrewed, and when that's done you're just left with a flat end plate. We then need to attach the adapter bracket, and although it has four attachment holes we've only got two screws, but that's okay it seems to fit in well enough. You just need to make sure the brackets aligned properly. So here we have the trailer fully extended, and the wing sitting next to it. So all we need now is a suitable giant hand crane to lift the wing onto the trailer. At the back there's a clamp arrangement with a couple of hinged locking bolts, and when they're undone you can open the clamp, and then offer up the wing. The clamp is shaped for the wing profile, and with the front adapter correctly located in the gooseneck, the clamp at the back is in the right place. Of course what you do need for this model fully configured is space, and we're talking about 49 inches or 125 centimetres. In summary, the wing is a very nicely profiled part, and with its transport cradles, it is overall very good. 
Of course it really is a supporting part for the main model which is the carrier itself and it's a typically high quality truck model from IMC. As you'd expect the detailing is at a high level but what's particularly pleasing is the high quality model engineering of the trailer. It has a high metal content and looks very impressive and overall it is excellent.